Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering, to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. This is a controversial one. Uh, that is Coinbase. I don't want to get too deep into crypto in general. I want to talk about this, at least at the foundational level, as a value stock. Coinbase has a $9.7 billion market cap. They have $5.6 billion in cash on the balance sheet. So a little bit of quick math, $4.1 billion is what you're paying for the business. Not some... some it's actual money in bank accounts. Actual cash money, fiat yeah. currency. <laughs> so, and, and that is not there. Uh, you know, they have a small position in Bitcoin and, and stuff like that. Uh, but that in, and it, that is also not the customer funds as well. I want to make that clear that everything that's gone on with FTX and now potentially Genesis going down, uh, all these exchanges that have had a bunch of problems. The problem is that they were commingling funds or loaning out funds. So, you, you know, just like a bank would do, you deposit your money into a bank and then a the bank turns around and lends that to somebody else to buy a home, for example. Well, right. so they have then, the cash or the loan as the asset and the liability is the deposit that they owe back to the depositor. We're not right. talking and, about that with, with Coinbase here. This is cash that's, that's Coinbase's cash on Coinbase's balance sheet without a liability that offsets it, that it owes some other party. And you know, there, there, there has been a lot of questions about, well, is that real? And one of the reasons I think that we know that it's real is because Coinbase still exists. <laughs> like, like right. everything that's gone over the last six months, they're, they have met their obligations. You know, they, they have filed their SEC filings with audited financials. This is not a off, offshore company that we don't actually know what's on their balance sheet. I mean, if they don't, if they're lying about what's on the balance sheet, people are going to jail. Uh, so it's interesting, right? Because this is one of those businesses where going public, frankly, makes it harder to necessarily uh, go after some of these opportunities in crypto, right? Basically, it just kind of slows everything down when you have millions of shareholders versus the FTXs and the Binances of the world that are still privately held and work with private venture investors that you have a smaller pool of owners and and you, frankly, you don't have to go through as much disclosure and you end up with fraud, right? And that's yeah, so a lot to, harder to, for Coinbase. To, to just explain exactly what you're saying there, one of the reasons that the big exchanges are offshore, FTX was in the Bahamas, um, Binance, I, I believe is in Dubai or their headquarters is in Dubai now, but they've kind of bounced around. And they would post, they would list these tokens that just kind of were appeared out of thin air. And they would get a bunch of trading volume. You're making money as an exchange. You're making money on trading volume. Coinbase right. really started as the a, word you're looking for there, Travis. We'll have to mute this. It's coins. Yes, that that is true. But uh, Coinbase was really had their hands tied with what they could list and what they couldn't list. That's why if you go to Coinbase's website and look for the price of certain tokens, you just won't find them because they don't list them. And they've had to push harder and harder to list more and more things so that they don't lose all of their market share. But what we're now seeing is that, like you said, not having all these things listed, not using a bunch of leverage, not borrowing from customers, not being overseas has been a huge advantage now because they're like, they're the only adults left in the room. Okay, so $5.6 billion in cash on the balance sheet, we're paying about $4 billion for the company's operations. So what are those operations? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the, the main operations today, and then I'm going to show you the big number uh, when we get to the end, because there is something that the market just, it, it, I think, is completely overlooking. So this is their, this is their front page. This is their, uh, what they're you know, saying that they're doing for in, individual investors and for business. Their go-to-market. Their go-to-market. Okay, so buy and sell crypto. This is the exchange. This is a bunch of stuff that goes along with that. The NFT business has kind of, you know, been something that they haven't um, captured a lot of market share with, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Coinbase One is is upgrading the trading experience. They have a wallet. That's where you own the cryptocurrency um, and, and it's not on the Coinbase exchange. Um, but I think the real opportunity here is with businesses. So institutional investors, commerce, when you go to a uh, Shopify page and you want to pay with crypto that is potentially going through Coinbase. Um, Prime brokerage, uh, I think it was 
BlackRock. I, I get BlackRock and Blackstone confused all the time. Uh, the, the big bank uh, is now working with Coinbase. So as companies get more and more interested in what can we do with cryptocurrency and NFTs, they're turning to companies like Coinbase. It's no coincidence that Google has turned to Coinbase. So what, what are those utilities that they're building? What's this infrastructure that Coinbase is building and why is it important? Well, just take something simple like a financial transaction. If you want to go on a website and buy a t-shirt for $20, you're going to put in your credit card information. Let's say they're using, you know, a uh, Shopify or square, the credit card companies and banks involved in that transaction are going to take two and a half to 3% of that transaction. Just, just off the top. Jason, you saw this in action. If you send cryptocurrency, depending on the blockchain that you're using, that transaction cost can be a fraction of a penny. So we could, so if you're a big business and you're- And, and, you're, and instantaneous, right? Versus and, credit card and payments. Instantaneous and instead of being days multiple weeks. days. And, and this is where you get to small businesses do not have six months of cash on the balance sheet as runway. A lot of small businesses have days worth of cash. Days right? worth of day. cash. Literally so moving up and... the cash that you get from a- you know, four or five day delay to getting instantaneously, instantaneously is a huge advantage. Then you think about, you know, restaurants, grocery stores, they're running on two, 3% margins. Well, now you're also paying two or 3% to credit card companies. So I could double my profit just by not paying the credit card companies. That sounds like a great deal to me. There's a lot of things that you can do within this cryptocurrency world. Then we can get into loyalty programs like Starbucks is doing, uh, Nike is doing some of their drops with, with NFTs. So there's the companies are experimenting, but there's, there's something there, I think is what business is starting to figure out. And the infrastructure is going to come from a company like Coinbase. So the services business is what we would look at. If we want to look at what sort of revenue that is going to generate for Coinbase, let's, let's put the exchange business aside for a second. Services revenue was $211 million last quarter, uh, grew. I think it was about double year over year. Okay. That is a, that is becoming a meaningful business. And I think when I think about Coinbase, I think about it being an infrastructure company. So like an AWS, an identity company for users, you know, there's starting to be more and more of those sign in with Coinbase buttons, just like there's sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google. Well, now if I have my digital assets, maybe my Starbucks gift card lives in my Coinbase wallet. I don't have to, you know, fiddle around with a wallet all the time or have a card in my pocket. It's just on my phone in my app. And then there, they have banking services. So you can now deposit your paycheck into Coinbase. You can, you know, do all kinds of things that you would do with a, a normal bank. So I think they're moving in that direction as well. So those are just the three really interesting businesses for them to grow on top of. I don't know exactly what those are worth, but let me give you, let me give you the kicker. They own half of the center consortium with circle that has launched the USDC token. All right, I'm gonna to try to say that in plain language. In crypto, if you wanna pay with dollars, you can use what's called stable coins. USDC is one of the leading stable coins. There's about $50 billion in dollar-based assets. But the center consortium holds, like let's say you put, you wanna get a dollar of a stable coin, a USDC token, you pay them a dollar, they give you a token. Now they can invest that dollar in things like treasuries and generate a yield. What happens when interest rates go up, like they're doing right now? Yields go up. And so the amount of the money that they're generating is going up. We don't, in the last quarter, there was about $100 million in revenue that Coinbase generated from USDC, but that will probably rise to about $200 million per quarter in 2023 based on circles. Uh, recent financial filings with the SEC. So this could be $800 million a year business, basically a passive business for Coinbase. How much do you value that at? It would $4 billion be a pretty conservative valuation for their stake in USDC? I think, I think that's reasonable. So then you get the rest of the business for free. Take the cash, get USDC, and then the, at the all the exchange business, the cloud business, the services business, Everything that they're doing is free. I just think this is a very misunderstood business. A lot of investors still think it's going to go out of business and go bankrupt the way that FTX did. 
I just don't see that as a risk right now. And so I think, I think Wall Street is greatly misunderstanding what Coinbase does. Jason, do you have any pushback on that? I, I think it's worth it's worth remembering at, at the at the end of the day for Coinbase, the business exists based on the viability of crypto as a disruptor in the way businesses move money, the way yeah. people move money, um, applications like managing inventory and logistics. Right? It's and what it's going to take to fully realize what what Coinbase can be. That has to happen, right? We, yeah. And and that admittedly that's. That's where we are. We're, we're, so you have to look past all, to your point, the FTXs of the world, all of the other exchanges that either over leveraged or committed doubt, outright fraud, right? And you have to look past that and refocus back down onto the rails and what is being built on the blockchain rails. And if, and I, I continue to see a lot of potential and progress, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as that progress continues to move forward, and we see the tools coming off of the blockchain that solve some of the financial problems you were talking about, then then Coinbase absolutely is deeply misunderstood right now, right? If it's not deeply misunderstood, that $5 billion in cash is gradually gonna get eroded because it's cash flows are gonna turn negative and yep. it's gonna start living off of its balance sheet versus building a stronger balance sheet. So I think you're absolutely right, but as an investor, you have to come come at this not just as a deep value, but the fact that it's misunderstood and that crypto is legit and that this is the strongest player and by far the, the, the most obvious adult in the room.